Food Heals Podcast, Episode 44. Changing your laundry detergent can change your life. Tweet that. (laughs) Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to change their status update from hashtag blessed to hashtag OMG even more blessed than yesterday, hashtag loving life. If you experience any of these symptoms, make sure to tweet a Kardashian immediately. All right, welcome to the Food Heals Podcast. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. And today, we have no guests. We are doing cute. N A. So we get a lot of questions. Thank you, Food Heals Nations, for your questions. We're trying to get all of your questions answered. If you email us and you haven't heard back, trust me, you're on a spreadsheet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we really want to help as many people as we can. That's why we're doing this. So thank you for writing in and we will get to you. Yeah. Our sponsor today is Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an amazing new company that is really, it's a game changer. It's changing everything. It really is. Are you trying to live a more healthy life but find organic and non-toxic products too expensive or hard to find? Then thrivemarket.com is the online shopping club for you. For less than $5 a month, which is $59.95 annually, Thrive Market members can buy the best-selling healthy foods and wholesome products in everyday sizes. And it's always 25 to 50% below retail prices. And you can't say that for these other grocery stores, right? It's like Costco and Whole Foods had a baby. And when you become a member, thrivemarket.com will donate a free membership to a low-income family, a teacher, or a military family because they believe that we should all thrive together. And I just love that. That's awesome. Like, that's the future of companies, right? It really is. They're really, like, putting out a model that everybody can get behind. It's sustainable and it's helping everyone. So that's why we scored an exclusive discount for Food Heals Nation. That's right. You never have to pay full price for healthy food again. Go to thrivemarket.com slash foodheals to start your free two-month trial and get 15% off your first order. That is a very cool deal, Food Heals Nation. I don't know of anywhere else where you could get your health, your household, and your beauty products or food so cheap. So sign up today at thrivemarket.com slash food heals. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. So we have two questions we want to get to today. So we're going to let the professional take these, professional voiceover artist Susie. I feel feel a lot of pressure right now. (laughs) The pressure's on. And we have four dogs in the studio. So if you hear a dog bark, jingle, Licking themselves. We apologize. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but that's how we like to live. That's how we roll. Okay, so here's a question. I've been enjoying your podcasts. Thanks for all the great info. I was wondering if you two have any ideas about how to get bad odors out of your workout clothes. I've tried putting baking soda and vinegar in the machine while washing, but as soon as the armpits heat up, the shirt smells again. I think bacteria is trapped in the clothing because sometimes my armpits don't smell, but my t-shirt does. You know what I mean? I do. <laughs> any, any ideas would be appreciated. Thanks, Donna. Donna, we do know what you mean. I think we've all been there. You're sweating it out at the gym. You're all proud of yourself. And then you want to wear that outfit again. You're like, damn, I washed this and it still smells. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough because if you're treating your body right, if you are exercising, you know, eventually... Stuff's going to stink a little bit, even if you wash it. So the first thing I'm thinking of is vinegar and baking soda are great at neutralizing odor, but I would think a, well, actually I have to, first before I give my tip, I have to admit a um, secret. What is your secret? Hobby slash secret shame (laughs) slash secret passion. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Susie's shameful secret coming up next. Okay, so I really love, it's my secret hobby, I really love being able to remove stains from my clothing. Oh. Like any stains. Like as soon as something gets stained, I'm like, there's got to be a fix for that. How can I fix it? Because I really hate having to throw away nice clothes. I love clothes. I love fashion. And I hate it when it gets stains and then something gets ruined and I have to throw it away. So if, if there's a way to fix it, 
I will find it. And I'm not talking about going to the dry cleaner because sometimes you'll bring something stained to the dry cleaner and then they remove like the first third layer of it, but it's still stained and then you just paid 30 bucks. Yeah. I'm not talking about that. So my secret passion is removing stains and I know how to remove <laughs> oil from clothing, shampoo, being a massage therapist, shampoo, actually, you know, a little hand washing of shampoo and any oil stains will remove them. Oh, that's great because mm-hmm. I get coconut oil stains mm-hmm. <laughs> all the time. Shampoo. Shampoo is meant to dissolve grease and it actually works. You have to do it. And now, now I'm talking about spot treating stuff. Yeah. So Donna, when you say you're throwing in baking soda and vinegar into the washing machine, try spot treating with a paste of baking soda. Baking soda is amazing for neutralizing stuff. Wet your t-shirt, create a little bit of a paste with baking soda, rub it in there and let it sit. And then even let it soak in maybe some warm water. That should really let it penetrate and see if that helps. And then wash it in the washer after that. That's my tip. That's really good. And I want to talk about laundry detergent because this could be a contributing factor to part of the reason why you're having an issue. So we always like to go to the root cause of the problem. So why are you sweating so much, right? Or why does your sweat stink so much, right? So that might have to do with some of the things you're putting in your body, but also on your body. So typically, our laundry detergents are filled with disgusting, toxic chemicals, okay? Mm -hmm. So think about this. You wash something in toxic chemicals, you dry it in the dryer with maybe a toxic dryer sheet full of chemicals, and then you put it- Oh, they're the worst. Exactly. And then you put it on your body. Do you think that your body is not absorbing that from your clothes? It absolutely is. And it's something that people don't think about. I didn't used to think about this. I remember reading this in the in a book that was all about natural cures. I don't want you to know or something like, woo, okay? And I was like, shit, okay? Do you know that there are people out there that change their laundry detergent and get rid of eczema? People that have eczema. Allergies. Allergies on their arms, on their face, through their nose, all these problems are gone because they change their laundry detergent. So I think this is really important to bring up. It may not solve every problem, but it may be the key to solving a problem where you're like, I've done everything else. I've tried every drug. I've tried every nutritional whatever. I have tried every supplement and I still have this skin issue or whatever it may be, these allergies. Sometimes it's as simple as changing your laundry detergent because you might be the person that that toxic chemical that's in that laundry detergent affects. Your dad isn't, your sister isn't, your roommate isn't, but you are. And you don't realize that that is affecting you. And this can change your life. Changing your laundry detergent can change your life. Tweet that. Charlotte agrees. She's itching herself. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely, Allie. You know, our bodies can only take so much toxic overload, right? So your body can, and this is what the FDA and chemical companies, including the ones that make our laundry detergent and our fabric softener, use in terms of determining whether or not something is safe for human use. And they say, okay, so chemical X in Y amounts is okay for the average human to use in their wash and their bodies will be able to tolerate it. Right. Okay, so that's where they're coming from. However, they don't know what you eat. They don't know if you live near a power plant or some somewhere there's pollution. Uh, in LA, Toxic we have water. bad air quality. We don't have the greatest water. So these are the things you have to take into consideration. Your body can only detox you so much. One of the easiest ways to reduce toxins, especially because they come into contact with your skin, your largest organ is your skin, is to change your detergent, change, get rid of your fabric softener. First of all, you can get those laundry balls. They're little spiky rubber balls. You throw them in the dryer and they soften your, uh, do you know about these? They soften your clothes without adding chemicals. I never knew what fabric softener was for. So (laughs) (laughs) I never really got that. So I don't use it. So I don't need to replace it. But oh, good. Yes. For listeners who are listening, listen to Susie. (laughs) No, it makes it does make a difference. I like nice soft towels and sheets, but you don't need to use chemicals. You can use a mechanical action. These dryer balls, they're reusable and you don't have to spend. You buy them once. I think they're, you know, cheap, five, eight bucks. And that's it. They last forever. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Cool. And you're saving yourself the exposure. To, there's actually some really bad stuff in the fabric softener sheets. I was yeah. having this discussion with a client. They're pretty toxic. Yeah. And those are things, they're just extra things we don't need to put into our bodies. Like 
Like right now, think about all the things that we're exposed to. We're sitting here on our cell phones. We're sitting here with Wi-Fi everywhere we go. We don't know what that's doing to our bodies yet, right? We do. Actually, well, there's a lot of studies they've just been suppressed. I personally don't know, but I know it's bad, right, Susie? It's bad. It's it's bad. We I should mean, have an expert on to talk about this because I don't feel qualified to talk about it, but I know should. it's not good. Yeah, we should. It, it's again, it's it's this kind of toxic overload. How much can your body take? Your yeah. body can. Every body is different, as we yeah. said before, and and your bodies can take a lot. You know. Well, our bodies are designed to detox. They're they're self-healing mechanism. Yes. But what we have to do in this toxic times that we're living in, unfortunately, is to assist our body to detox, whether that's through supplements, whether that's through nutrition, whatever you're doing, you have to assist the body because most people are overloading their body, especially if you're eating a lot of fast food and a lot of processed food, a lot of food that comes in a can or a box, you know, those things are not healing to your body. So It's about eating more intrinsically healing foods, fruits and vegetables, nuts, beans, seeds, things from the farmer's market, things from the earth, you know, and then what else can you do to help your body heal? You cannot put toxic lotions on your body that it then has That's to detox a super easy all the one. chemicals. That's yeah. a super easy one to just switch over. Put coconut oil on your body. Yeah. Use some of the lotions from the products and services that we promote on the podcast and our, you know, sponsors. You know, they have great healing products and they don't come with dye number five and all this shit that you don't need. When I was in massage school, I remember seeing this pamphlet called Rub-a-Dub-Dub, There's Cancer in Your Tub. (laughs) And it was this pamphlet about all the chemicals that are in soaps, shampoos, lotions, all the things, toothpaste, all the things that we use um, in our bathroom, in our daily lives that we think are okay, that turn out to be also, you know, degreasers for engines, certain (laughs) chemicals that are, you know, carcinogens that, again, are in there because in tiny, tiny amounts, the FDA is like, oh, it's fine. But if you continue to use these things that are not natural, that your body doesn't know what to do with, they sock away in your liver. That's what your liver does. Yeah. Is it's meant to detox your body. Your, your liver can only break down stuff it, it recognizes. If it's chemicals that have been altered, it just doesn't know what to do with it and it will just store it away. Yeah. Usually in your fat, actually, because it's like, all right, I'm going to just put this away for now. It's like a hoarder. Yeah. Right? It's so like, I'm going to put this away so I can't see it because I don't know what to do with it. These chemicals are making us fat. So you want to lose weight? That's a real secret to weight loss. <laughs> Get rid of the chemicals in your life. For yeah. real. Yeah. If you guys want to hear a really good episode about this, we interviewed Sandy Furman from No Talks Life. It's one of the earlier episodes, so go back and look for that. I can't remember the episode number, but she tells you exactly what to make sure is not in your shampoo, in your soap, and you know, things like that. She was great. She was so knowledgeable. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have her back for sure. But yeah, I hope we answered your question. And if not, email us again. But Susie, what's the next question? So Donna, good luck with your stinky t-shirts. We hope that (laughs) the (laughs) baking soda paste will help you out there. Food Heals Nation, if you're like us, you care a lot about the food that you put into your body because you know that food heals. The problem is that good, healthy food can be extremely expensive, but it doesn't have to be. That's why we were thrilled to discover Thrive Market. ThriveMarket.com is like the Costco for everything healthy online. That's right. It's an online shopping club offering the best brands and groceries up to 50% off retail prices. Ship nationally for free. They have brands that I buy all the time like Simply Organic, Garden of Life, Dr. Bronner's, Tom's, Nutiva, 7th Generation, Gaia, and so many more. So basically everything I'm already buying at Whole Foods, right? Exactly, but at 25 to 50% off. And you can easily filter everything by your preferences. Gluten-free, vegan, raw, non-GMO, organic, and even fair trade. But what I love most about Thrive Market is their charitable cause. For every paid membership, ThriveMarket.com donates a free membership to a low-income family, a teacher, or a military family. How awesome is that? This is a game changer, Food Heals Nation, because you never have to pay full price for healthy foods again. That's why we scored an exclusive discount for you. Yes, so check out Thrive Market and get two months free membership plus 15% off your first order. Join the movement at thrivemarket.com slash foodheals. 
You are listening to the Food Hills Podcast. Make sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Okay, next question. I found out about your podcast from the Rich Roll Podcast and really love it. I am not sure if you can help me or not, but I thought it couldn't hurt to ask, smiley face. I am a mother of eight. I just have to interject there. Wow. Wow. Bless you. Mother of eight. <laughs> I'm a mother of two dogs and I can't handle that. <laughs> eight children. God bless you. Wow. I'm a mother of eight, a marathon runner, and we homeschool our children. A marathon runner. Whoa. Again, mother of eight and marathon runner. And homeschooling all eight. Type A? Susie? Uh, a, a, a busy lady. We'll say a busy <laughs> lady. So my life is pretty busy. There we go. I have also struggled on and off for over half my life with anxiety. Mainly health anxiety and anxiety with driving. I have at different points in my life been on medication and have been through therapy. Both helped for a while, but it seems to come back. I would really like a more holistic approach and to be healed of this problem. Do you know of any tips or resources that may help? I do understand that you are not doctors, but I have heard you mention tips for other conditions. Thanks so much and keep it up, Jennifer. Mother of eight. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Jennifer, for your email. And I did email Jennifer back with some of my tips, which I'm going to share today. And I know Susie has a lot of tips as well. And, you know, I appreciate what you said. And when you guys email us, we're not doctors. So we're never going to give you a specific protocol. We're never going to say this is exactly what you should do. What we aim to do is share stories of what other people have done so that you can pick and choose what you want your protocol to be. Because the truth is, is that no one else can heal you. No doctor can heal you. No mother can heal you. No friend can heal you. No crazy naturopathic nutritionist can heal you. Only you can heal yourself. And so what we aim to do is share stories of others that have healed themselves of various conditions in order for you to figure out what's the best path for me, right? So I have definitely suffered from anxiety as well as depression in different periods of my life and to this day. And I definitely have some things that have worked for me. And I know Susie does as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to share. We're not psychiatrists. So if you want professional help on any of these issues, we definitely recommend professional help. But at the same time, we take a holistic approach as we always talk about. So we're going to tell you our holistic approach to really healing these things. First of all, you're a marathon runner. I'm not. Susie, are you? No. So damn. I I don't even... (laughs) I don't even aspire to be because I that takes a lot of determination and yeah. I, I applaud her I applaud her <laughs> marathon runner and mother of eight okay so you know I think I am so busy I'm one of the busiest people I know and I'm sur- sure Susie can relate but it sounds like you are super busy and so that is the busyness is a factor in all of this because Our busy lives don't give us time and don't give us permission to heal ourselves and to take time for ourselves. And I can't imagine having eight children. I don't know. You didn't say specify how old your children were, but eight children running around or even if they're grown adults. And responsible for their schooling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're homeschooled, right? Mm -hmm. So that's huge. So it sounds like you don't have a lot of time to yourself. And I don't have the answer of how to find the time to yourself because I don't know your schedule. But I would say number one, <laughs> hello doggies, they're saying hello. If you hear them. <laughs> number one is really to find that time for yourself so that you can practice self-healing practices. And this is number one, finding time for yourself when you can indulge in whatever it is that you need to d- indulge in whether it is a massage, whether it is therapy, whether it is I like to do, I like to paint, I don't care what it is, your passion, you have to find that time. That's number one. And then the ones I gave you in my email, I still feel passionately about because for me, I've suffered anxiety and I didn't have it my whole life. I was not an anxious kid. I always felt safe. I always felt protected. I always felt taken care of. I grew up in a really safe household, a stable household. My parents didn't, we weren't rich by any means, but we didn't suffer. We didn't need food. There wasn't a problem. My parents got along. They loved each other. It was very stable. I was very safe. I didn't feel unsafe until I was in my late 20s because I lost both of my parents. And all of a sudden, I had no one to turn to. I had no 
family. I had no financial safety net. I had no love safety net. It was all gone. And that's when my anxiety started. And, you know, it's been years, but I still deal with it. And I've done a lot of work on this. So I feel like I can speak to this really authentically. So one thing that I've done that has been super, super healing and effective is what I call write and burn. I learned this from University of Santa Monica, USM. They have their spiritual psychology program, and I've really kind of grown it and changed it and made it my own. So I invite you to take my advice of what I've done and really make it your own. And what it is, is it's not journaling. It's not diary of a teenage girl. It is when you're in that moment of anger, fear, overwhelm, whatever it is, you got to go take five, right? Probably 10. But you're going to go take that moment and you're going to write it down. Everything that is upsetting you in that moment And maybe you don't know what it is. Maybe you don't know what the car, that car cut me off. Well, what is that really about? Is that really about I'm angry because mother didn't love me enough? You know, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to claim to know, but you got to write it down. So you're going to sit there and you're going to write for as long as your anger, sadness, fears come out. Just write, 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 write. Okay. And that writing is probably going to cause some tears, some anger, some outbursts. And I invite you to have that moment. If your kids are home, do it in a closet. If you're alone, do it out loud, as loud as you can. Have that emotional moment that the writing brings on. Writing is very, very powerful. It's very connected to our inner emotions that we may not be accessing on a daily basis, right? So take that, put it on paper, get it out, cry, get it out. Once you feel complete, you'll know when you're complete, when you start feeling peace, like, oh my God, I just cried all the shit out that I've been holding on to. Then you're not going to keep that journal. You're going to take that paper, that journal, whatever you've just written, and there's two things you can do. You can burn it, fucking burn it, get rid of it, because you're getting rid of that energy that you've been holding on to, that you've been burying. Or if you can't burn it, maybe you're in a hotel room or you're in a small apartment and you don't, you can't do a fire. Don't. Rip it up into tiny, tiny little pieces put it in the toilet, you know, get rid of it so that no one can ever read your words. Those words were not for anyone else's eyes. You don't want anyone to discover it. You don't want to reread it because rereading it will bring up those emotions again, right? So you're not trying to keep this for yourself. You don't want anyone else. It's meant to just get out of you. Yes, exactly. But writing is more powerful than any other medium. So thinking about it, no, that keeps it stored in your body. Talking about it is great. It is very helpful, but it may still be stored in your body. Writing about it is the most powerful tool that we have in our arsenal. Something about transferring those emotions from our body to that piece of paper, I can't even tell you. Mm -hmm. So that is something that has been so powerful for me to deal with things. Sometimes I won't even know what I'm angry about, but I'll just start writing and the truth will come out. And that's when the freedom sets in. So you want to feel the freedom from that anxiety. The freedom comes from determining what caused it. And that happens by writing it out and feeling the feelings that you don't want to feel. Mm -hmm. We all suppress our feelings. Suppression doesn't work. Suppression gives us nothing Mm -hmm. except more anxiety, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you know you're suppressing, you know it's time to go deal with that. So my number one tip is write and burn. I've got two more, but Susie, what do you have? Well, first thing that comes to my mind, you know, I will share that I have dealt with depression on and off throughout my life since I was a kid. You know, it's definitely in my family. I come from an Eastern European family and yeah. we're prone to depression. I've seen it in a lot of family members. And depression is ruminating over the past. It's looking over your shoulder going, I made a mistake. I should have done this. I should have done that. I've also had anxiety. When I was in third grade, I started having panic attacks, and I didn't even know what they were, and my mom had suffer- also suffered through them and recognized them and was able to help me deal with them. Yeah. Panic attacks, anxiety attacks, anxi- generalized anxiety is really fear of the future. So it's your brain. So if you think of a coin, depression and anxiety are really two different sides of the same coin. Depression, you're looking over your shoulder, looking backwards in the rear view mirror, and, and anxiety, you're not being present, but you're looking beyond going, this might happen in the future and I'm afraid of it. And what if that happens? What if that happens? And it's, it's a different energy. Depression is low and slow and it's, yeah, 
depressive Mm -hmm. and heavy Mm -hmm. and anxiety is high and frenetic and unsettling and nervous. And I really have experienced both in my life at various times, not at exactly the same time. When I heard this, when I actually heard, you know, depression is looking in your rear view mirror and anxiety is fear of the future, my mouth dropped because I just thought, it makes it so clear. Oh my God. That's exactly correct because I have been through therapy. I've been on antidepressants. I've taken anti-anxiety medication. I have researched nutrition about it. I've been through years of talk therapy and I've been through hypnosis and very, just a lot of different ways to deal with this. And it does make it just like you said, it makes it so clear. It's like, oh, so what's the solution? Yeah. Being present. Mm-hmm. Because with either of those, you're not being present. You're looking behind you or you're looking forward to something that hasn't happened yet. And what is the best way to do that? What is a holistic approach to do that? There's many ways. First off, I would say is learning to deep breathe, meditate. I don't want to say control your breath, but learning to use your breath and tapping into breathing Mm -hmm. to bring you into the present. And beyond that, there's many other ways, specifically finding things that you enjoy. Allison and I talk about food a lot. We love food. Food (laughs) food makes people bring and come into the present because you're sitting there enjoying your food. Perhaps for Jennifer, you know, maybe she loves marathon running because you have to be present when you're marathon running. Actually, yeah. Scratch that. You can get, it can be very meditative, but you're in the moment of you're moving your body. Exercise brings you into the present moment. Yoga brings you into the present moment. Yeah. Connecting with your breath brings you into the present moment. And so anytime, Jennifer, I'd recommend that you're having anxiety, stop and breathe. And there's a lot of resources that you can look into. There's many different ways of doing this. You have to find one that works for you about using your breath. There's biofeedback, there's meditation, there's yoga, there's tai chi. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. But that's first and foremost, is to look at your anxiety as that you're looking into the future. You're worrying about what hasn't happened yet that may never happen. And the way to combat that is to come back to the present because worrying about stuff that hasn't happened is not going to help you. It's so true. I couldn't agree more with what Susie's saying in it. It brings me to my next, you know, tip. But when I say tip, it's more really what's worked for me. And that is discovering how to meditate. And I know that meditation has a lot of connotations. It's like a religion. You hear meditation, you think all these things like you have to be in a certain mindset. You have to be with your legs crossed in a certain way, holding your hands in a certain way. You have to be a Buddhist. No, 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 no. What I mean is how to make meditation work for you. So you can meditate while you're driving. You can meditate in a yoga class. You can meditate anywhere you're at. You can meditate in the most stressful situation. It's about taking that moment and being mindful. So right now we're sitting here at the podcast and I can say, I am mindful that there is a microphone in front of me. I am mindful that I am speaking into this microphone and I am only thinking about what is going on in my present moment, right? I'm recognizing all the things around me. I'm rec- Right now, I'm cold. It is cold in our studio. We do not have the heater on because we want to basically create a good sound for everyone listening at home. And so what is being mindful? It's being mindful about where you are in the present moment. And it sounds like silly, like what's the point? The point is, is that your mind is no longer in the future or in the past, just like Susie just said, Right. So if you're worrying, it's in the future. If you're depressed, it's in the past. If you're mindful, you're in the present. So what's happening right now is all that matters. It's all that we have. It's all that we have. It's the only real thing, actually. Yeah. And so it's like this. Let's say you're driving to work or you're driving to a meeting or you're driving to an audition. I don't know. Whatever your job is that you know, you're in a stressful drive, which we're all in, okay? Or you're on the stressful train ride or you're on the stressful walk. Maybe you're in New York and you're, (laughs) you know, not everyone. If you're on public transportation, you can still be in that stressful on my way to work mode, right? What can you do to be in the present moment and observe everything that's going around on around you? It's so much better to be off your phone not listening to something and just being present than it is to go, oh my God, this is happening. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. What's going to happen, right? That is a waste of your precious, beautiful, divine creative energy, right? Whatever you're going to right now, you can thrive at. 
But if you're worried about it and you're stressing out about it, that's taking all the energy you need to be there. So what meditation really means to me is finding those moments of calm and peace in the most crazy, insane circumstances. And I've talked about this before. This can happen at any moment. Like when I lost a dog, my friend's dog that I was dog sitting (laughs) and I was crazy, running after her like a fucking crazy person, thinking the worst. I had to stop, take a deep breath and go, everything's going to be fine. And it was. But before that, the part of me was looking into the future going, the dog is dead. It's my fault. The dog got hit by a car, which is terrible. And then I'm going to have to live with that for the rest of my life. And that was almost like you protecting yourself from the worst potential possible outcome because your body and your mind always want to protect yourself. Yeah. And you're and you're thinking, okay, well that that's that's the I'm gonna extrapolate this out. What's the worst thing that could happen? Oh God, what if that happens? I gotta not let that happen. And that anxiety doesn't help you solve the problem. No. It doesn't. Not at all. Mm -mm. So it's about being mindful and meditative in the moment, any moment. And then if you do have time, you do have 10 minutes, you do have 30 minutes, maybe it's before you go to bed or maybe it's first thing in the morning, then yes, meditate. Listen to a meditation. It will guide you there. They're so powerful. There are meditations for anything that you need to work on. We're actually going to offer some soon. Yes, we are. We will talk about <laughs> that in the future. But Susie and I are very, very big fans of meditation. There's a really good podcast. It's called like the Meditation Podcast. It's out of Australia. And their episodes are amazing. They do a lesson in the podcast and then they do a meditation and then they play like the most beautiful music you've ever heard. And if it doesn't get you there, I don't know what will because it gets me there every time. Like I'm like either weeping or I'm just silent and happy and fulfilled and I'm feeling the light and I'm feeling the love. And, you know, meditation is huge and don't discount it. That's all. Love it. (laughs) I have another piece of advice for Jennifer. God, I feel like we could talk. We should do a whole episode on anxiety because I feel like we could talk about this for a lot. I mean, this is a big deal for people in this world at this time. I mean, there's a lot of craziness happening. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressures we put on ourselves. And, you know, just in this day and age with technology and expectations and there's just a lot going on. Well, you're expected to be available at every moment because you have... And you're expected to be perfect and you're expected to to, to succeed and excel and... Yeah. And whether it's your friends, your family, or your, you know, career, your coworkers, you're expected to respond to that email, that text, that Facebook message, that tweet, whatever the fuck it is, that moment. And when you don't, people are like, oh, is something wrong? Yeah. No, I just don't have time to get back to you right now, okay? (laughs) Like... So it's like you got to let that go. And like vacation responders, put those on all the time. I only respond to email (laughs) at 4 p.m. every Tuesday. (laughs) That's my dream email. (laughs) Don't have that yet. Just saying. So my next bit of advice for Jennifer, and this came to me actually when you were talking because I was like, what? I have something else to add. What what else would it be? Mm. And I think that sometimes it's appropriate to adopt the idea of fuck it. Absolutely. (laughs) That's the name of my book I'm writing. Fuck it. (laughs) I apologize, Jennifer, if this is offending your ears. I know you're homeschooling your eight children. You sound like a good woman. We should put a caveat in the beginning, like, please turn off if children are listening. But this is for you. You know, it sounds like you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot to do. You have a lot of, of beings to take care of physically, emotionally, you're taking care of their schooling, you're running marathons, you have a lot to do. And sometimes it's really helpful, and this can help you be uh, brought right back into the present, where you're not thinking about anything future or past, just to go, fuck it. Yeah. You know, I have to do this, I have this on my list, I have to go do that, I have to talk to this person, fuck it. It'll get done when it needs to get done. Yeah. You know, sometimes... It's just as important to hug your children and spend time with them as it is to say, oh, you have to, we have to do this, we have to go to this practice, and we have to get this done. Sometimes it's much more beneficial to just be in the moment with them or your loved ones or yeah. your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your whoever it is. Your dogs. Or your dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we always bring that up, Food Heals Nation. And this has Susie been something <laughs> that I have tried to apply to my life, the idea of fuck it. And when I was really able to do it because I had a lot of expe- expectations on myself for a long time. And when I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve, I was just like, you know what? This is happening for a reason and fuck it. Like yeah. I didn't get where I wanted to be, but that's okay because maybe I'm right where I'm supposed to be. 
And I still struggle with that. I've talked about that in terms of manifesting and creating what I want in life. But I'll tell you, it feels a lot better to just kind of throw up your hands and surrender and say, there's certain things I can't control and I'm just going to enjoy where I'm at. And that brings you right back into the present, which as we've talked about, is the complete antidote for anxiety. And it's so much better in terms of a tool over time to combat anxiety than say a pill. Well, that's it. I'll leave it at that. Then say a pill. And sometimes you do. I've, I've used Xanax and it's been a lifesaver. And I've used meditation and it's been a lifesaver. And I've used the idea of fuck it. <laughs> and over, over time, changing your perspective and your expectations of yourself and being super hard on yourself and it, it changes the neural pathways, yeah. you know? It doesn't take very – it takes 21 days to change a habit. It doesn't take long to change the neural pathways in your brain if given applied pressure over a certain amount of time. It's been proven. So, Jennifer, just say fuck it. I couldn't agree more. And you guys, this is like so mind-blowing right now, what I'm about to tell you. And Susie doesn't know this because I'm about to tell her oh. that I started writing a book called Fuck It. And the reason is- No, you didn't. Yes. This was my father's philosophy. So we, we share talking, part of a brain. I was thinking you are channeling my father right now. So my dad got remarried to Dorothy, my stepmom. And basically, every time we see each other, every time we have, you know, our family time, something comes up, something funny. And she goes, what would your dad say? And we go, fuck it. Like, it's so much fun <laughs> for us. And she's like a Southern proper lady. Like, she's not the type to be like, mm, you know, that's like, bleep it. Like, if she was on the podcast, she probably wouldn't say it. She would go, mm, it, you know, but that's our philosophy. And that's how my dad was. And that's how he lived every day of his life. And so... The book is basically, fuck it, the art of surrender. Oh, my God. So right now. My mind is blown. I'm on wow. this podcast. I am inviting you, Susie, to be a co-author on my book. And I think we should write it together. And I bet Food Hills Nation will love it. I humbly accept. <laughs> we I did not on- plan this. I'm guys, honored <laughs> to co-author, fuck it. <laughs> Yes, so I started the proposal. It's not done. So let's add some chapters with your experiences and let's fucking do this. Yeah. Fuck it, the art of surrender. I love it. Because that's what it is. It is. You cannot. It is. And and for me, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I love to curse. Um, It's just a way (laughs) of life, really. But for me, it also kind of lends a sort of humor to it because without my sense of humor, having dealt with my depression and various types of heaviness that I've dealt in my life without looking at the things that I've gone through with a sense of humor and that kind of that title encompasses that it's like fuck it like what what are you gonna do just throw your hands up and go what are you gonna do yeah you gotta you gotta laugh at stuff you have to absolutely you can't take everything so seriously I couldn't agree more and I feel like that's why I'm around today that's why I'm okay because I've gone to the point of like no return and back and gone all you can do is laugh laugh at this perfect horrific life that has been given to us whether by god or whatever you believe in i don't care (laughs) you know the important thing to remember and if you meet enough people in your life you will learn this this took me a long time as well to really really understand that no matter how bad you have it no matter how anxious or depressed you are there is always someone that has it worse and there's always someone that has it better And so so you can't compare yourself to anybody else because everybody has their shit. Yeah. Everybody has their challenges to go through in life, no matter what. They may be richer than you, but they have something way worse, maybe in terms of health to deal with, or they may be, they may have a better marriage than you, but you know, their finances are worth, it doesn't matter. And there's no reason to compare yourself. And that's why it's just, everybody's got their stuff. We're here for a reason. We're here to learn and grow and love each other. Through it all, to surrender and be humble and to laugh. Laughing laughing is actually another way to bring you into the present to overcome your anxiety, Jennifer. Just, you know, find a way to laugh. It brings you right there. You know, I couldn't agree more with what you just said. And with the laughter thing, there's in the documentary, The Secret, which I know is a little hokey and a little cheesy, but they have the woman who healed her breast cancer through laughter therapy. And she just said, fuck it. Like we're saying, and it was all about like 
loving and enjoying life. Mm -hmm. And we've interviewed practitioners who do laughter yoga and who do yoga that helps cancer therapies help heal you. And there's so much to be said for a positive attitude and a positive mindset. And that's why the placebo effect exists. Mm -hmm. And there was a funny show I just For those people that might not know, can you explain the placebo effect? Yeah, like, I mean, the show I'm about to tell you about actually explains it really well. And they were like, it was, um, if you watch Fargo on FX, which is a TV show modeled after the movie Fargo, which is a classic, like I grew up watching. My, so good. My dad loved Fargo. He was from South Dakota. Fargo's in North Dakota, but the whole point is- He was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. He grew up on a farm in South Dakota. Wow. And he moved and met my mom and blah, blah, blah in North Carolina. My mom was from New York, but anyways- he grew up in a farm in South Dakota. So those accents and everything, I understand that. I, I know those people. I love those people. They're wonderful people. But so that movie was turned into a show on FX. And our friend is actually one of the the SVP of... Anyway, so this is a great show. And they had this moment. And don't let it deter you from watching the show. It is violent. So if you have kids, you cannot watch it with kids. This is an adult show. There's a lot of murder things that are not PG. So... <laughs> It's for adults only. Anyways, there was one moment in the show that really rang true for me because I have been through this and it was kind of making fun of the way it was, but very, very truthful to the way way it is today. And, you know, especially in the past 20 to 30 years about the placebo. And so they go to the doctor, a woman and a man who are married and they say, you have cancer. There's nothing we can do. We've done what we can do, but there's this clinical trial and we will give you a pill that may work or it may not work it's it doesn't matter the point is you're either going to get the pill that may or may not work or you're going to get the sugar pill and the woman's just like well why won't you give me the pill that works (laughs) (laughs) i'm laughing right now because i have seen a bit of that show i loved the movie yeah I saw that scene. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. And she's like, I don't understand. Just give me the one you think it might work. So give me that one. Yeah. He's like, well, we can't do that. Do you want to do it anyway? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then she makes a joke later about how she's taking the sugar pills. And okay, the point is the placebo effect. What Susie asked me is, okay, you take a controlled group of people and you, they all have the same disease or whatever, and you give them a pill that may work half of them, 50% get the pill that may or may not work and they study the effects. Does it work? Does it have these side effects? Blah, blah, blah. And they give the other half a a sugar pill. And then that's why it's called the placebo effect because when people that take the sugar pill get better, they say it's because they believed they were taking... They believe they're getting something that may help them and therefore they get better. Yes. But they're actually just getting a little bit of sugar in a white pill and they got nothing external except their, for their belief that they may be getting better. That yes. is the placebo effect. Exactly. So the point of this whole conversation is first, I mean, there's many points, but first of all, the placebo effect is real. If you believe you're going to get better from whatever is wrong with you, whether it's anxiety, depression, cancer, you will get better. If you do chemotherapy and the most toxic treatments on the planet, you believe you're going to get better with all your fucking heart and soul, you're going to get better. Mm-hmm. And that's because it's mind over matter. Our mind mm-hmm. affects our cells. You don't think that your mind affects you. Think about when you get embarrassed, your face turns red. I mean, that's proof. Like there's so many proven ways that our mind affects our body, you know, like sexual arousal. Like it's your mind over your matter. Whoa. <laughs> we <laughs> just, just saying... jumped to a different subject. <laughs> but I'm just saying because I it's know true. a lot of people don't understand or want to believe the amount of you know, control your mind has over your body. Exactly. So that's what I'm trying to get to. The mind is steering the ship. Yes. Which is why it's so difficult when you have mental illness, when you have anxiety or depression, which is a sort of lower level, sort of generalized, lots of people experience that to up up to more difficult ones, uh, more difficult mental illnesses. But the mind is really steering the ship. Yeah. It's the perceiver and it's also the effector. I mean, it has huge control over your body. Huge. Absolutely. And so for Jennifer, the last thing that I want to leave you with, because I did email you this and I want to tell our listeners how passionately I feel about this one practice. I think that there's a lot to be said for the practice of yoga. And yoga tends to be grouped in with meditation. Yoga tends to be this like overarching practice that 
people don't understand is actually very, very individualized. And there's so many types of yoga that someone might take a class and go, this doesn't work for me, or go, I love this and not really understand what yoga is because it's just a super powerful yoga class where you're just getting a workout. And that's great too. We're not dodging the workout. That's great. But for me, what I have found most helpful for anxiety and depression is kundalini yoga. And that's my opinion. Feel free to try it. But what it does is you use this breath and it's called breath of fire. And it's such a powerful healing breath that it brings me personally into a state of awareness that I don't know how to get to in any other way. I don't get there in a laying down meditation. I don't get there with sleep. I don't get there in any other way that I found in therapy. You know, there's plenty of ways to get yourself to that peaceful mindset. And for me, it's been really powerful to get me somewhere that I didn't know I could go. And so I invite you to check that out. I invite you to, if you don't have it in your city, to watch videos online. I know Gabrielle Bernstein is a great you know, she's a great teacher of everything, spirituality, business, etc. But she's a great teacher of kundalini yoga. And it's just the power of the breath getting you into that state of peace is so healing. And I can't say enough about it. And I feel like I can't talk about it. It's so experiential. You got to experience it for yourself. You and do. then if, if this works for you, write us and tell us how you experience it and we'll read and it. And if it doesn't, let us know. It's okay. You know, not everything works for everybody. You exactly. got to find what works for you. Yeah. And I want to stress that because I, I took my girlfriend who's totally like core power yoga. Oh, I hate know. Kundalini yoga. <laughs> exactly. I'm sitting here. Work for I'm everyone. just sitting here looking down, going, "Okay, I'll be silent, silent right now." It, and but I, the my my good friend that introduced me to it loves it, and it's all individualized, and that's it okay. Is. Yeah, I do know that Breath of Fire is very effective. It gets your energy up. For sure. Yeah, Kundalini is energy. Yep. And so we're trying to really ignite that energy. It's fire. And so, you know, I heard someone say, not everyone needs to be on fire at all times. So you don't want to take this every day. Yeah. And I don't think you do. But when I take it, I know when I need it is when I need that fire. And I need, it's fire and peace for me. So. Fire and ice. Check it out. (laughs) See if it's something that works for you. If not, no worries. But it's something that's been effective for me to access that part of me that hasn't always been available to me. Like I've been able to have realizations or have memories, especially memories that I haven't been able. And I'll ask. Kundalini yoga is very connected to the subconscious. I feel like yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. So if you're blocked from your subconscious, which some people are, some people aren't. Like if you are very clear on your intuition, like you're a mom and you're like, my mother's intuition is solid. I got this. Then, you know, might not be a tool you need. But for me, it's been a very good way to access my intuition. Regardless, it's good to try different things. It's good to expand yourself. You know, that's how we we make new neural connections. Yes. It's part of the joy of life is just trying new things, whether it be food or experiences or classes or languages or whatever. Absolutely. So I hope we've answered your questions today. Wait, I have one more thing. I feel like this could go on forever. But Jennifer, I encourage you, whatever you find that works for you, because you said you do homeschool your eight children, and that's just, I'm sure, a lot to manage every day. You know, I encourage you to share what works for you with your kids because it can only help them, whether it be, you know, meditation or pre- or just be practicing being mindful or yoga. Kids love yoga. They're actually really good at it. They're way more flexible than we are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it can actually be a lot easier to learn mindfulness and connection to breath when you are younger. So Jennifer, I, I really encourage you, both of us encourage you to share with your children whatever works for you. You know, I'm sure it might be really difficult to make time for yourself to learn yoga, to learn how to meditate or to do the write and burn method. But kids learn really well as their parents are learning beside them. And they might really gain something from it by sharing it with you. So if you find something that works for you and you want to teach it to them so that you can all do it together every day to help quell your anxiety, I think that would be a really beautiful thing. I think your kids would learn a lot from it. I totally agree. And it just made me think of something else. We could go on forever. I know. Forever. We're going to talk all night. Okay, I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly. But I just think that it's so important to remember that this is 
a journey, not a destination. And we always say that, but what does that mean? What it means is that if you write and burn once, you're going to feel so accomplished that you're going to think that issue is done. And in most cases, it's not done. So this is an ongoing process. I went to grad school for two years. My goal was to get over the deaths of my parents because it was causing me so much pain, anxiety, heartache, anxi- depression, etc. And in that two years, I did so much work. But the truth is, is what I went away with is I can't fix it in two years. I can't fix it ever. It's an ongoing process of letting go of that pain. And you know what? It's a part of me. It's a sacred wound. Yeah. But I cannot suppress it. I have to voice it. No, you can't. And, you know, that's part of the what this podcast is about. If I get to talk about it, it heals me a little bit. Yeah. If I get and then to- someone hearing about you talking about it might help them heal theirs. Well, that's the whole goal. I hope so. <laughs> you know, it's like we've lost uh, in a lot of places in America. We don't have a tribe. We don't have a sense of community. Yeah. You know, especially in like large cities. And if you don't, you know, if you move away, like we both did, we both grew up on the East Coast, moved to L.A. Yeah. You got to find your new tribe and you got to find a way to connect. And that's a beautiful thing about something like this where you can do it online. I know. On, there's so many communities online that can help you. That's another good point, Susie. We could go on forever, but oh my gosh. You can find a Facebook group for people that are dealing with anxiety. You can find a Facebook group for people that are dealing with anything you're dealing with. And that is huge in two respects. One is to acknowledge and overcome any shame that you might have. Yeah. Because especially mental kind of stuff, depression, anxiety. I know I've experienced that. It's a lot of shame behind it. Like you shouldn't have it. Yeah. You're supposed to be perfect. You should be perfect. And there's why you're complaining and just suck it up and find a way to get through it. And and everyone has something else going on worse than yours. Right. So how dare you worry about this? But just being able to own it and being like, this is what I'm dealing with and that's okay. And how do I find a way through is one thing. And then just finding other people that commiserate with you and can be like, yeah, I've gone through the same thing. And doesn't it suck sometimes? But isn't there a way we can fix it? Isn't is just hugely helpful. Absolutely. Good luck, Jennifer. Let us know how it goes. And if you have a question that you want answered on the podcast, just email us at info at foodhealsnation.com. We will try to get to every question. If it's been a month and you haven't heard back from us via email, trust me, you're on a spreadsheet somewhere. We are trying to get, we want to talk to everyone. We have a very small team. There's just two of us and we have Lisa who helps us book guests, but you know, we don't have a big company. So we just want you to know that we appreciate your emails. Thank you so much. If it takes us a month or more to get back to you, please know that we are doing every effort to get back to you. And we want to do more Q&A episodes to really answer the questions that you have, because we know if you have them, other people have them. Absolutely. If you like these, let us know, because we really enjoy connecting with you guys in this manner. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately.